the good things are arriving for the Snyder on the morning of November 20th, 2009. The sun is coming up over the city of Marietta and things are calm. However, on the Muskingum, it's anything but. It's highly unusual for the W.P. Snyder Jr. to travel these waters anymore. It's sort of the grand old lady of, um, you know, the working river and it uh, means a lot to people. The spectacle of it too is really something to see. It's the, she doesn't move out that often. But before she can go, the stars have to align. The river level seems like it's cooperating, staying at or below 19 feet. I don't know the, the depth of it now, but uh, we've got plenty of clearance. We're hitting it right, just right, just before it uh, starts to really get into the rainy season. And the river isn't the only thing cooperating on the Snyder's big day. With the help of several strong men, the rust gives way and the old Harmer Railroad Bridge turns open without a problem. Well, they um, put a, um, an iron wrench on the top of it with four little prongs and they ran around there like they were oxen to open it up. And once they got it broken free, it, it went fine. That's the beginning of a good day, let's hope. <laughs> However, there's much more to do. Next, shipyard workers need to remove the 175-foot Snyder from her moorings. So we're going to drop our spar poles and our walkway and uh, then gently take it down between the uh, bridges. Which takes time. And while that's going on, a towboat is coming down the river to get into place. We have quite a bit of clearance. You know, uh, the boat's 32 feet wide and we have a 50-foot span to drop down through, so everything should go down through, we're hoping real easy. It took a long time to get the Snyder to this day, the day she's leaving for repairs, which will keep her afloat. The Ohio Historical Society has the responsibility to make sure all the I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed, and, and we've done that. So let's get a new hull underneath that boat. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> and just like that, after years of worry and frustration, the Snyder is on her way. Those on board ring her bell, just like the old days. She didn't have the whistle. It wasn't under her own steam, so we couldn't blow the whistle. And I just felt like the boat had to say, had to communicate to the people that were on the shore, so that's why I rang the bell. After the goodbye bell rings, she heads under the first obstacle. The Washington Street Bridge isn't a problem. Then is on to the Putnam Street Bridge. And finally she passes by the old Harmer Railroad Bridge, heading out to her old stomping grounds, the Ohio River. I'm kind of thrilled about it. Uh, it, it it's, a, it's a big adventure. It's a big piece of equipment. It's got a lot of historical value to, you know, my estimation. I mean, it's the last of its kind, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good about it. After making it out to the Ohio, the Snyder pulls off to the side of the river. A barge is tied on each side of the boat to protect her during the trip to South Point. The purpose there was to really protect the vessel and to give the towboat something to push. So they were actually pushing the barges and the boat was moored onto the barges. So it was really the safest way to do it. I'm pretty confident the haul is going to be safe getting down to the South Point. It was 146 miles, I think, but uh, I think we're going to be all right with it. Jack Deck and Fred Smith with Historical Society ride on the Snyder for the entire trip. In the beginning is a nerve-wracking ride. The dimensions of the interior structure are very light compared to, let's say, a cargo barge. And this is the way the boats were built, of course back in the uh, teens of last century. And uh, having uh, seen the deterioration through all these years, why, uh, yes, I was apprehensive. However, taking on water isn't the only concern. They have to worry about what's outside the boat as well. When we went through the sets of locks, we went through, I think it was two or three sets of locks, we had about three feet either side of the barges. So we really were, were tight going through the lock, but the boat was completely protected. The trip is expected to take 18 hours, hours the two spend in the boat's sleeping cabins and pilot house. You don't often get a view of the, from the river like that, and especially being up in the pilot house, because that's where we, us passengers, 
were the whole time. And it was really, you know, you could kind of maybe pretend that you were the pilot of the boat and, it, and the view that you would have of the river. And so that was really uh, fantastic. But then, about 12 hours into the trip, a problem arises. In the middle of the night, around 2.30 or 3 o'clock, we ran into some heavy fog. It's a common thing, you know, fog, they, they, they get shut down and they tie off and, you know, they presume after the fog lifts. It was a uh, shutout fog <clears throat> and uh, the uh, proper safety practice is to uh, take the boat to the shore and wait it out. And fortunately, they were near the uh, Kiger Creek power plant and there's a dock facility there. So they just pulled over and tied it off and, and uh, the fog broke about 10 o'clock in the morning and then we continued our trip down. So The Snyder eventually makes her way down river, but the trip ends up taking 30 hours. Now it's time for the next hurdle, getting the large boat out of the water. 